happen. Let's get it on. Um, I plan for 90 minutes, but I don't really have enough slides for 90 minutes, but depending on how many questions there are, we may, be, we may uh, finish early maybe, uh, but uh, I'll do my best to at least not be too late. Uh, so this workshop is not about Faust per se, but about the special topic of uh, doing Faust plugin programming. So it was my idea. Uh, well, usually I do the more academic or sciencey stuff, uh, as some of you might know, but uh, it was my idea to do a real practical introduction to all the incantations that you need to, to get Faust compiled something to a plugin that's ready to use in your DAW. Uh, so there's, there are basically two reasons for that. First, uh, users want to know how to do it because they maybe got a nice plugin as a Faust code and then they need to figure out how to compile it so that it works in their, their favorite uh, LV2 or VST host. And uh, the other group I'm uh, talking to are the developers themselves uh, who um, I want to lure into maybe do uh, at least uh, maybe do some of their DSP programming in Faust because I'm a bit biased of course but um, um, I think Faust is, is very nice for doing DSP programming. You can program on a much higher level and it still feels like coding on the bare iron so to speak. It's, it's much like doing hardware uh, but uh, it's all virtual. So uh, if you into patching with PD or Max or whatever, then you, feel, you will find some elements in there which are familiar, but it's a textual language and you actually get a mathematical description of your signal processor. So even if in 50 years someone disco uh, discovers your code, they can maybe still do something with it. Uh, at least if they can still find the Faust specification, the specification of the language. But that's only the academic or the sciencey part of it. Uh, the practical part of it that you don't have to worry about all these uh, nitty gritty details which uh, can take very long to, uh, to get right. Okay, that was the gong for the final, final members of the audience to get in. Not yet. <laughs> it's like in the theater. The, the break is over now. Okay, so anyway, I will go into that a bit more later on. But uh, for now, just the, to give you a short synopsis of uh, what we'll do today is... Um, well, we don't have tables here, but uh, installing the required software, you have the slides, you will find them in the wiki, of course, and I've also uploaded a demo um, to GitHub. You can get the entire um, GitHub repo, the link will be shown later, and you can find that in the, in the slides. And then you have all the materials and can do, and uh, I have written down all the commands that you need so that you can then redo the stuff at home if you are so inclined. So I'll show how to install the software and um, then show you how to do basic programming in Faust without going too much into Faust because teaching Faust uh, will, would take uh, a day at least. I mean, uh, at least getting the basics across. I will show some elements of Faust. Uh, I will give you a complete walkthrough um, how you can do a very simple instrument step by step and beefing it up until it becomes really a playable instrument in Kala or Ardor or whatever you use. Here in the demos I will be using uh, QTractor and um, so I will be showing how to compile both LV2 and VST plugins about the reasons for that later. They work exactly alike. So if you're using a host like Bitwig Studio on Linux which uh, only can do VST plugins then you're covered and if you have one of those nice open source uh, uh, DAWs which do the LV2 plugins then you're covered too. 
So I will show that if there's enough time, I will also show it in different hosts that I have installed here. So I, I can show Ardor, Bitwig, QTractor, and also Traction here. And I also have Kala and Jalf, of course, installed. So I can show that too if there's enough time. And I will also, while walking through the demo, I will also show you some optional features. Uh, in these architectures, uh, which can be used for musical applications um, and also for beefing up uh, the, the plugins with the GUI, which is pretty new stuff, which was done by one of my students. Okay, so the secret sauce here is Faust. So let's start talking about Faust. Why would you want to use it? Um, well, it would be nice if Faust would make it possible to bring DSP to everyone, so you don't have to know much about coding. I mean, the language is pretty simple, actually, but we really have to face the fact that the, doing DSP programming is hard, because DSP is hard. You have to know quite a bit of math, and you need to know some special coding techniques, at least if you're doing it in C or C++ or even Assembler. But... All is not lost. Others have learned this, so you can learn it too. And uh, uh, what's so nice about Faust is that it makes coding these pieces a lot easier. So there's less code to write. You write, you can do a simple additive synthesizers in just uh, maybe four or five lines of code, and most of that is actually the control variables. The algorithm itself is basically a one-liner. And um, the, the rest of the stuff that you need, if you want to do a filter and you do that in C, then you have to think about buffers. If you have a recursive filter, you need a buffer uh, to keep track of the past samples. And uh, it's easy to forget about that or make one-off errors and stuff like that. And uh, you don't have to worry about that when using Faust because the Faust compiler will take care of it. And um, the other nice thing about Faust is that we have some very good codes available already. So some of the world leading experts like Julius Smith from Karma are working in Faust by now and they have published many of their codes. So there's lots of really good DSP code in the library. And much of that is available either... <laughs> What's that... <laughs> Uh, okay, so that speaker, it wasn't me, I hope. Uh, much of that is also available in a form so that you can just plug it into your program, pretty much like you take an abstraction in PD and put it into your PD patch. And uh, other stuff is ready-made code, which you can produce uh, an instrument from and just use it in your DAW. And other stuff is you will have to work a bit more. But in any case, there's lots of code already available so that you can, uh, you don't have to start from scratch. And getting into this P programming is, of course, the hardest part. And it's always nice to have some code that you can start working with. <clears throat> And if you got deeper into Faust, there's also lots of in-depth documentation available. The uh, pages by Julius Smith, if you want to do really the, the hard math, uh, math stuff, he has plenty of pages there. And also plenty of pages, uh, basically uh, even uh, an introduction to Faust itself. I've linked to that in the slide. So uh, these are actually links. They're not always recognizable in the slides. I'm sorry about that. But... Um, you should try, if you see something that looks like it might be a link, then you should try in the slide to just click on it. And if you're lucky, then you actually take into the page. And one very nice thing about Faust is that it has an online uh, compiler. So it lives on the web as well. So if you don't... if if you want to get started with it, it might be a, a hurdle to get Faust up and running. I'm going to show how you can do it. It's actually not that complicated. But even if you don't, or even if you use Windows and, uh, and don't have an up-to-date uh, binary for the Faust compiler available, you just go to the web and, 
and use the online compiler to, to compile your DSP code. I'm going to show that as well. So there's plenty of nice stuff in Faust. Um, from To do that a bit more formally, I wanted to present some pros and cons. So for me, it's more the pros than the cons, of course, but I tried to re I tried really hard to also find some some reasons why you would wouldn't want to use it. So the, for me, the 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 uh, main the main points for Faust are that it has a formal semantics. That's maybe something which only scientists or mathematicians like me are interested in. But um, you have to think about it this way. Um, just uh, in the in the last break, we I talked to someone who's doing um, who's doing audio formats, and um, if you're doing stuff that might be useful or might be might be interesting for others, let's say in 50 years time, and if we are talking about music, there is always. Uh, there are always some scientists who are interested in the old stuff, namely musicologists, which I teach at the university. And then you have to start thinking about uh, um, things like, how was that instrument implemented? How did it sound? And um, with, with old instruments, we maybe know, maybe some of them are still around with real instruments, but with virtual instruments, unless you have precisely the max version that you need to run a certain patch uh, from one of the, the, uh, the fathers of computer music, you don't know how it sounds. And in 50 years, maybe all these, uh, these Max versions will, won't be available anymore, so you can't reproduce the original sounds. And that's where the formal semantics comes in, so it's also something for documentation and not just, not just for getting executable code qu more quickly and more conveniently than in C. It's also very high level that is closely connected to that. Very high level means that you can concentrate on your DSP algorithm and forget about all the nitty gritty stuff. That's, for me, that's just great. I mean, I, I don't like bothering with about thinking about buffers. Should it be five uh, samples long or 17 samples? I don't want to bother with that. The Faust compiler will take care of that. Then it's also cross-platform. Cross-platform, we have other toolkits. We've heard about DPF. We, you probably heard about Juice and, and these uh, kind of things so that you can produce cross-platform plugins. Uh, well, get plugins for, uh, for different platforms. But Faust really takes this to a new level. We have, uh, have uh, so-called architecture files. And so you can compile to different targets. Edgar already mentioned that this morning. And um, the nice thing about that is you can do your own architecture files. It's a, basically, it's just a C++ template for the plugin. And into which uh, then Faust fills in the, the, the DSP-specific code, which is generated from the Faust program. Next point is output is C++ code. So you can just take the code for, produced by the Faust compiler and run with it and modify it for your needs. And that is actually done by some people who I know are using Faust to do at least parts of uh, their plugin. And of course, then you have to know C++ or at least C. C. There's l very little s actual C++ in, in the generated code. It's basically just an object, a class, which encapsulates all the, uh, the, the routines which are needed and the data. So that's uh, the way that uh, C++ gets used by Faust. So you don't have to be worried about some of the uh, inefficiencies which might uh, creep in if you use C++ instead of plain C or assembler. And then there's some more stuff which I can't really get into. There's the Faust 2 branch. Uh, which gives you an embeddable JIT compiler for Faust programs. So JIT means just in time. Um, it's an, you can use Faust in a library and put that into your own programs and then have the DSP code generated and executed on the fly. 
And this is, of course, nice for rapid development tools. And we have two examples of that already. Faust Live is available for Windows also, I think. And the Mac and uh, Linux, of course. And uh, uh, PMix uh, is unfortunately only available on the Mac right now. Uh, that PMix gives, basically gives you an environment to, to program your Faust plugins directly in a, in a VST uh, host, like a DAW. Faust Live is more for doing standalone stuff, for quickly testing plugins. So but it's very nice to have this, this quick way of, of just dropping your Faust source into a program and have it run there. And there's also the web audio support, which is uh, where you can run your Faust uh, DSPs in a browser. Yes. One question. You were mentioning, uh, unfortunately, uh, with respect to the PMIX only being available to OS X. Well, right is, now. Are there any plans to... Yes, like, but they're still uh, quite a bit off, if I understood the guy correctly. So there, there are no... Dates. No, no expected time to arrive. Sorry, no. Thanks. Okay. The web audio support means that you can run your DSPs also right there inside the browser as JavaScript code, as ASM JavaScript uh, to be precise, and it runs almost at native speeds, which is an incredibly... Uh, incredible feat in my view. That was all done by Gram, of course. I'm just talking about the Gram stuff right now. Um, there are also some, some disadvantages of using Faust, so certainly there's a learning curve. You have to learn a new programming language if you already know C or maybe C++ and maybe Java or JavaScript, which are popular languages today. They are all imperative languages, object-oriented, imperative. So you give commands to the computer. Not so with Faust. Faust is a functional programming language and uh, even among the functional programming languages it's purer than many others so there are no side effects whatsoever. What, uh, what you write down is essentially an expression which describes how a signal processor operates. And there are very many high-level operations, the so-called block diagram algebra operations which let you combine these things, which is more in the style of of patcher environments like PD or Max, and uh, less in the style of C++ where you say, okay, first I need to get these buffers and then I multiply them by three and then I add something and so on. Uh, so uh, functional programming is much, much different and it uh, requires a different mindset. Uh, then, they're more seriously, I mean, all these things can be overcome with learning, just studying Faust and learning to code in it. Um, there are some things which aren't quite finished yet, uh, which are worked on by Gram. One is the short circuit conditionals, uh, so that you can shut off part of your DSPs if you don't need them. Uh, that's not in the in the master in the master uh, branch of uh, of the Faust JIT repository yet. But there is a special branch where it's already implemented, and as far as I can tell, it seems to work great and will probably soon be integrated into the mainline. Uh, Faust branch and the second thing is multi-rate processing which is in this setting quite complicated and uh, where Jan that's one one thing which uh, I remember we talked about that how many four or five years ago and designed a scheme and it's but it's not easy to do so but it will be it will be there eventually multi-rate processing you need that for stuff like doing Fourier transforms Right now you have to jump through some hoops, do some stuff in Faust, do uh, again some other stuff in Faust and connecting these two and maybe doing the Fourier transform in between or something like that. And that, uh, we, of course, we want to, to keep it, uh, keep everything to Faust. It must be possible to do Fourier transform there. Then another potential uh, point is that your target architecture, which uh, your 
environment that you want to use needs to be supported, which isn't always true. But for the popular environments, I think there's, uh, Edgar showed it this morning, the impressive list of architectures uh, where many people have contributed to Faust. It's a uh, comparatively easy way to contribute if you know a plugin interface, which you, uh, if you have a plugin interface, which you know very well, and you know how to, to uh, which callbacks need to be in implemented also. Just teams uh, up with someone who's written architecture before or take one of the sample architectures and put that stuff into the architecture and make it work and that's always a valuable form of contributing to Faust because in the end of course we want to support everything that does audio in some way at least. So, but if it's not, if your environment is not supported yet, then you'll have to roll your own architecture code. So that's a potential disadvantage. And now I'm already entering uh, the more practical stuff. So if there are any questions about Faust itself, I mean, the, the inventor himself is also here. He can probably answer these questions much better than me. <coughs> Uh, yeah, one thing I've noticed, uh, sometimes you get really long compile times, uh, depending <laughs> on, of course, what you're writing, but I've had like seven hours on a modern computer. Submit a bug report. There's probably some corner in the compiler which isn't either not completely working or where some optimization really needs exponential time or something like yeah. that. Submit a bug report with a minimal example, and I'm sure that Jan will look into it. Where do I file bug reports? Is it just a mailing list or? The C. Well, I've had both happen. Uh, one one program is the the C takes really long, and the other is the the Faust takes really long. The propagation made it mostly. But uh, yeah. Yeah, and like yeah. something like 10 gigabytes of memory or, or more, I think, even. Post on a mailing list or submit a bug, bug report at the SourceForge project, right? That's the proper way to go about that. So, if there's no further questions about that, I'm now entering the realm of uh, getting practical and getting stuff installed. So, if you want to do VST plugins, uh, then you need this one commercial piece of software. The rest I'm going to talk about is all open source software. There. This, uh, these uh, VST sources are also available in source form, but there are some license conditions. Uh, this is stuff from uh, Steinberg, uh, the makers of Cubase, and well, it depends on whether you want or have to use VST in some projects. Uh, and then if you want to compile your Faust uh, programs to that format, then you just need to install the, um, the VST SDK source. So I've written down how you can do that. You can read it for yourself. I'm not going to walk through the steps now. I have it pre-installed on my computer. Um, this may be a stumbling stone if you want to publish your software, then you have to fulfill Steinberg's license conditions. At least if you sell stuff, I think. And uh, okay, but as long as you're running the VST plugins for yourself, there's no way that Steinberg can know about that or has to know about it. At least that's how I see it. So if you have a project which you want to port to Traction or maybe Bitwig Studio, then, uh, and you just need that Faust plugin as a VST, it's possible. You just grab the source code and install it and then you can use uh, the same processes which I am going to show with LV2 to produce exactly the same plugin within limits. I mean, uh, it, there's some stuff that's just done differently in VST than in, in LV2 in subtle ways. Sometimes it's be done better in VSTs, but most of the time it's done better in LV2. So uh, there are some limitations which you have to live with, but most of the functionality will be exactly identical for both, both kinds of plugins which I'm going to talk about. 
So this is also the stuff that I've done to, and uh, some of my students. Um, for I'm going to give some tips for Arch users because I'm a big fan of Arch Linux and I actually I use Manjaro. But um, so you see some uh, notices of uh, Arch user repository packages, then it becomes very easy to install the stuff. And even if you don't running Arch, if there's some, some stuff that you want to find out how to package or how to compile which dependencies it has, um, don't look at the Debian source packages. They're a big mess. They're, they're horrible. And in Arch, you get a single shell script. There's the dependencies there and the entire build process, everything in a single shell script. So you can easily find out how to compile stuff even off, uh, on a totally different system, whether it uh, is Debian or, or Red Hat or something. So this, uh, this information may be valuable for others too. And in any case, I included it. So... You should install the SDK first. Why? Because during Faust installation, it will try to figure out the script which, I'm, uh, which gets used to, to uh, compile to VST. It will try to figure out where the sources are. Maybe you need something to edit ma something manual anyway, but uh, maybe it will figure it out on its own. Otherwise, you'll have to, to uh, look at the Faust uh, to Faust VST script and, and fill in the, the right path to the VST SDK there. But that's why I put this step first. So if you put it in, in some of the paths, I, I um, put up a sample path here. Uh, if you put it there, then it, uh, the, the script should be able to find it, which is included with Faust. So installing Faust. It's really easy. So you take the slide and this doesn't work here. Hmm. Okay, if you have a, a proper PDF reader, you just copy this line. Let me see whether I can do that in this uh, browse, zoom. Hmm. Selection, where is it? Ah, there it is, okay. Oh, I hope that this works. Okay, let's, let's clone the sources. I'm just going to put this on the desktop now, somewhere on the desktop. Cloning rip. Ah, okay. I don't have internet. Why don't I have internet? So let me see. CBase. Yes. Where's the public network? More networks. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay, now I have internet. Well, this will probably take a while. Let's pretend that we've already done that. <laughs> I st oh, of course, I have the sources somewhere. And then you just run make. And if you want it to be a bit quicker, then you let all your processors work. And I also added world, which compiles some extra stuff, which isn't usually included, but which you also won't need for the demo. If you do it, if you do just the make, it will have amazingly small number of dependencies. I basically just the C library, or is there some, some other C++ standard library, and you need a C++ compiler, and you need probably need actually the GNU C++ compiler or Clang, of course. That's pretty compatible. So, and then after that, you do just do a sudo make install and it will, um, everything will end up under slash user slash local by default. Also, of course, there's uh, an, an Arch package which I made. So, 
So I'm actually made two packages. One is the the mainline Faust, uh, which is all you need for doing the stuff that I'm showing here. And the, the other one has more dependencies. That's the experimental Faust 2 um, branch. Uh, it has more languages, output languages, and the additional features which I mentioned, the JIT compiler and stuff like that. But uh, for just compiling your plugins, the, the mainline version is all you need. Okay, yeah, you see all the commands there, so it should be easy to follow that, those instructions. Uh, for the stuff that I'm using here, the, the LV2 and the VST uh, plugin architectures, you need some extra stuff. You need the boost headers, that's used in some part of the architecture where it does uh, processes, MIDI stuff. And uh, actually, I think I'm using that in the voice allocation algorithm somewhere. I didn't want to to write a, a cyclic buffer uh, just for this. It's in the boost headers. You only need the header files from the project. So on Ubuntu or Debian systems, that's probably uh, boost uh, minus def or something like that. On Arch, you just install the boost. Uh, package and you need the LV2 headers you can get those from those links as well but they should be readily available in any uh, kind of Linux distribution that you want to use and Qt of course as well Qt is only needed if you want to build the custom GUIs uh, with the plugins and uh, there you might ask why use Qt? We just had the discussion on the LV2 mailing list. Qt is not ideal for for plugin GUIs for ver for a variety of reasons, but it's uh, we did it in Qt because uh, it's readily supported by Faust. There's already quite a lot of code in uh, for doing uh, Faust uh, DSP GUIs in Qt and. We just use that, and that's why we use Qt. So there are some some uh, pitfalls there. Uh, you need to be sure that uh, the Qt version will work with your DAW. For instance, Ardor requires. I don't know what I do when it does this. Um, if you have a tip for me, <laughs> okay, some some cable connection maybe. Okay, I hope that that uh, the guys listening on the stream haven't just <laughs> exploded uh, yet. So the Qt you need for Ardor is Qt4 and the Qt you need for the other doors or you can use with the other doors including Qtractor is uh, Qt5. So that's the current version of course. So I've also written down the, the packages that you need to install. And um, so the next thing that you need are these special architectures for LV2 and VST plugin programming. You actually don't need to get these. Uh, the stuff is um, that you need for compiling is all included in the latest Faust JIT versions anyway. But I've included these links to the original um, uh, Bitbucket JIT repositories with the code because uh, uh, there are some uh, there's a make file in there which shows how you can um, package up stuff with the make file if you want to do that for your own plugins and there's also a couple of examples which you can use for testing immediately and you can just clone these repositories of course I have downloaded these as well. So let me just show you how you compile this stuff. I have it under sources, bit bucket. Okay, Faust LV2. Let me show the Faust LV2 stuff. So if you need all the dependencies that I mentioned, and then you just type make. Or if I'm doing it to make it a bit quicker. Uh, then it will compile, use Faust to compile the stuff. This uses the make file, not the script that you get with Faust. 
Uh, there's also the script included, so you can always get the latest stuff from this repository that I've shown, but I try to keep the Faust repository in sync very closely so that it doesn't fall behind. Yeah, so it's a, um, it's quite a few pl sample plugins, So, but it should be almost finished now. If you just type make in the Faust LV2 uh, directory, uh, it will build um, with default options, which means no dynamic manifests in LV2. Those of you who've done or used LV2 plugins will know what I'm talking about. So it needs to generate some, some LV2 uh, plugin manifests and package them up with the, with the plugins themselves. And um, it would also do GUI-less plugins. I can show you a different way to compile. Well, it's still, um, there's some extra compilation stuff going on there because it actually compiles the plugins tw twice to generate the, the uh, dynamic manifest, which is always in the plugin itself. But you can, if you have a version of LV2 installed, uh, or more precisely of, uh, of lib lil v, which is the host lib, uh, that, for instance, Qt uh, Tractor uses and also Ada uses. If this is compiled with dynamic manifests enabled, then you don't need all this stuff. And it, the compilation gets much quicker. Let me briefly show that as well. Uh, this is the Dyn manifests option. You have pretty much the same options also if you use the compilation script, which I'm going to show later on, um, and you just say you want these, so um, in the make file you write equals one, so this enables this app, um, this option. So and then it will, then the compilation is much quicker because uh, it just needs to compile the plugins once, just as a shared library which can be loaded by the host. But I'm going to stop this here now as well and show you another option which is GUI equals one. So in this case the make file will compile against Qt5 by default uh, if you have that installed. Uh, and it will build a plugin including a custom GUI in Qt, a Qt GUI. I'm going to show that in a in a couple of minutes how they look like. And this takes a bit longer again because, uh, well, actually there's some kind of QMake stuff and mock compilation and everything going on there in the background. So this takes a bit longer than the usual compilation as well. But I mean, it's not, not really that bad. Okay, so once you've compiled these things, um, while it keeps compiling, I'm going to get back to the slides. Okay, you also need a DAW, of course, if you want to run these plugins, or at least an LV2 or VST host. I'll be using QTractor here because I can do both VSTs and LV2s and QT5 GUIs with it, and it's uh, nice and small and easy to use. I could have used Ardor, as I said, in the end, I will maybe show some of the other hosts as well. But uh, for now, I'll be sticking to QTractor, so if you want to follow along with the demo, you will have to have that installed as well. And I've left some links here of other stuff that you may want to try, Bitwig Studio, um, Radium, uh, Reaper on the Mac, if you're here with a Mac. So the stuff also works on the Mac with some limitations, which I'm going to talk about at the end of my presentation. And Traction, also on Linux, very nice. And okay. If you don't have any of these and have troubles running the plugins directly in your door, then maybe Carla will help you. We've seen it uh, uh, in, in Vince's uh, presentation. So, um, and there's also plug uh, there's also an external for PD, which I've written, so that you can run the LV2 versions of the plugins also in PD. 
Uh, okay. Compilation, I've already explained that. There are some technical details. You can specify which QMake version to use to the make file. And um, I've explained the dynamic manifests option. Uh, I recommend using this option. There are some reasons against it. Uh, LV2, from the, the basic philosophy of LV2, is that you have all everything all information as static data in these manifest files so that the, the host can discover everything about the plugin without running the plugin. But there are some features which are just impossible to do if you don't have dynamic manifest, like uh, the tuning control that I'm going to show. So if you can use the dynamic manifest, it's good. It's not absolutely necessary, but... Um, in any case, none of these distinctions hold for for um, VST because it's always uh, there's all, only one output in the VST architecture, which is the plugin. And to install these plugins once they're compiled, let me see whether it's finished already. Yes. Um, Okay, you end up with some stuff in the case of the um, in the case of LV2, you end up with this. Oops, where are the results? Ah oh, no, I did did I do the VST stuff? The accident. Uh, there it's, it's still compiling, that's why. But it should be finished any minute now. Any questions concerning the build process while it's still building? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably anything which does uh, standard C plus plus eleven or later. So four four six uh, four seven should be should be okay. So it just finish it. And here in this case, the Faust LV2 stuff uh, gets generated in a separate LV2 directory as a single bundle, which contains all the plugins and the, and the needed manifest files and stuff. So you can just take this and copy it over to your .lv2 directory. where I already have quite a bit of stuff. So you see the faust.lv2 stuff is already in there, and therefore I'm not going to do that now. But you can just take the entire bundle and throw it into your .lv2 directory, and then stuff is installed. And you can immediately fire up your DAW, and they should be recognized. Um, of course, if you're packaging stuff for someone else, then you might want to install elsewhere instead on under user lib lv2 or something. So that's how this works. That's the makefile compilation. Same process basically with the VST stuff. You run make or the scripts and then take the shared libraries which come out of that and throw that in your .vst directory. And well, I don't really want to go into the technical details of the compilation process, but um, you see in the VST case, you just get a single binary, the shared library, which is the VST plugin, so it's a bit simpler. In LV2, 
there are some, some details involved. Whether you want a GUI or not, whether you have dynamic manifests or not, whether it needs to generate the manifest and the manifest and the plugin binary needs to be put together into a so-called plugin bundle. And all that is taken care of either by the make file that you find in the in the JIT repository or uh, with the script which is also included in the Faust installation. And uh, well, so there are some options there which are in, in lighter blue, and but I don't wa really want to go into that now. So using the online compiler, I actually have this link should actually be working. So let me see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the online compiler looks like this and it used to greet you with a selection screen where you could select uh, various example programs. That's not the case anymore. You can enter your code right there or you can just drop a file over there. So let me see. Let me take one of these files that I have. So you find the this examples in the examples folder. Um, let's take, for instance, a little instrument um, like the organ. Where do I have that? Oh, let's take the car plus. So the the DSP file is the Faust source. Let's just drop that up here, and. Um, didn't work, why? No, oh, I need to, sorry, now the sound will get worse, but the battery is, is going down. I still have an internet connection, so this should work, but it doesn't. Ah, there, there it is now. So you, you see the code actually, uh, I'm not going to explain all of that. It's an instrument, it's a um, physical, simple physical modeling instrument and uh, the code which are pretty much stolen from Jan and uh, so that's why his name is up here. And um, so that's the code that you find in, that, in the examples. And you then go to the compo uh, compiled code um, tab and uh, you just select uh, as an architecture whatever you want. If you want 64 bits LV2 without GUI, it, it'll be this architecture, or you can have uh, create a plugin with a QT4 GUI or QT5, or let's, for fun, let's do a VST this time with a QT5 GUI. So, and then it will actually show you the C++ code, but we, of course, we just want to have a binary, and so I click on the last tab, Takes a little while again. Maybe do it again. I hope I didn't kill the. Ah, no, there it is now. So if you want to download use, uh, the plugin, you can get it right here. If you have your phone ready, you can just scan the QR code. And I will just click on this on this file here. It's a tarball which contains the plugin. So I'm going to save that and let's look at it. There it is, car plus. So you see there's in this case there's just the car plus dot so in there, which you can now drop into your dot vst folder in the home directory. Otherwise, you'll have an, entirely pl an entire plugin in there. You just unpack that and throw that into your .lv2 folder, that's all. So it doesn't get any easier than that. I hope that you'll agree with this. Okay. That's well, there's one more possibility, use the script. This is what actually is done by the online compiler when it compiles the stuff. It uses these helper scripts. One of them is the faust.lv2 script, 
which creates LV2 plugins from Faust sources, and the other one is a bit, uh, bit uh, weirdly named Faust 2 Faust VST. That's because there's also another VST architecture by Karma, uh, but which isn't quite as capable, but which you can also use. But this script uh, is uh, for my Faust. Uh, VST stuff. So it has various options because I'm running out of time. I'm not going to, uh, to go into all of these, but you see you can select the Qt versions that you want to use and you can also instruct it to keep the C++, the generated C++ code, um, if you want to tweak that yourself and stuff like that. And um, you can also specify a style for the GUI and um, there are some, some pre-configured uh, style sheets available in the Faust source. And um, for LV2, you can also specify whether you want dynamic manifest support or not. And uh, also quite useful, if you in LV2, every plugin has an URI. And you can choose that with this option here. It will tag on the plugin name and then, then you can have your own plugin URIs. If you don't specify one, you get a generic one, which po actually, which is actually URL pointing to my Bitbucket website for that. So let's get even more practical and see how whether I can still, in the thirty minutes that I still have, walk you through. And a, and a complete example. We'll start out with something very simple, namely, I'm going to get rid of those, this little example here. So that's just a sign generator. You probably thought now, okay, I'm kidding you, but we'll arrive at something much more useful in just a few steps. Uh, this thing, I mean, it's probably pr pretty obvious what it does, so I don't even have to explain it, but you see that there's some uh, library imported there, which has the oscillator, uh, um, um, oscillator function, this OC function defined in it, and there's one control here for the frequency in hertz, and uh, this is described by a certain function, numeric entry function, and uh, you have a default value for the frequency here and a range of values and a step uh, size. And then what your process function does, process is the main function in the Faust program, um, it realizes the, the global processor, so the DSP, which is realized by the Faust program. In this case, it's just an oscillator, which oscillates at the given frequency, which I can then control with the uh, frequency control. And let's just compile it so that you've seen it once, how you do that manually. It's very easy. Let's do a VST. So remember, it's Faust VST, not just Faust 2 VST. And then basically, you just specify the name of the Faust source, in this case, x01.dsp. And then it will, everything else gets done silently. In this case, it will only for the benefit of the online compiler, I think we. We introduce that, you introduce that, that it prints out whatever gets produced by the script and this will then get packed up. For us, it's just an information, okay, it left our plugin here and now you have the x01.so uh, right there and you can drop that into your .vst um, um, directory and that's all you have to do to install the stuff. Um, so that I don't have to compile everything manually here. I've prepared something. Ah, okay. Um, to get these sources, um, let me show you where you can find this stuff. Ah, yeah, there's the, the repository. It's on GitHub. Okay, I use GitHub for that. You, in the slides, you have the command, you just copy that, and then you can clone the repository, which has the slides in it, this example and a little make file which then automatizes uh, the compilation, but it uses this Faust2 
dot Faust VST, uh, Faust to Faust VST script. So let me just run make. And it will also produce a Faust. This is this uh, a GUI. This is the minus GUI option. But of course, I've prepared that as well, so do that I don't actually have to do it anymore. I just wanted to show how that works. It will take a while because with GUI compilation, as I've explained, it takes a bit longer. I've already copied this stuff over. I can show you that, for instance, the VSTs are in... I put it in a separate subdirectory so that they're easier to find. The VST um, host will also look in subdirectories. So there they are. All the plugins, in this case, only shared libraries because that's all VST has. And now let's see them in action. So let's start with the simple one that I just created, that I just compiled. Um, I can show you that. Okay, Jack is still running. And as I said, I'm going to use QTractor for the demo. And we just create a MIDI track. And add the plugin, that's all. Well, I've chosen LV2 here. I've, I've actually I compiled both. So they are also available as VSDs in QTractor. Um, oh, I'm going to use the LV2 now. So, and there we have sound. Um, it's not much, but you can actually change the frequency. So that's probably not what you expected, um, but it's the first step. So it's actually produced by this plugin. So you have a control and the GUI is included, as you can see. It's in this case a very simple GUI. To show you what you can get when you do more stuff like this and to keep you motivated, uh, I'm going to show you a complete, um, a complete project with, in this case, uh, yeah, let's take that one. So these are some of the of the sample plugins. I have the um, kind of couple of strong synthesizer here, which looks like that in the GUI. And um, well, we can take away the free verb and have uh, font sitter reverb also as a as a Faust program, and you see the GUIs are formatted. They are not just lists of, uh, of sliders. Uh, that's because the layout information is really in, can be included in the Faust program. This will be in the final steps of our walkthrough. So, and you can also have some plugins with outputs. So here we have some we have a GUI element which is called the bar graph in Faust, which then gets rendered as, as this kind of uh, control so that you also have some meters and stuff like that. Okay, that's how the full-blown result uh, looks later. Now let me just walk you through the remaining steps. Um, Maybe we don't do all of them, uh, but okay, we don't have to listen to all of them. So next step would be if you want to arrive at an instrument, <coughs> we have already have the oscillator. <coughs> so uh, one more step, one more step. Um, 
let's add some metadata. The, uh, the, the plugin hosts always like metadata because then they can show some information about the plugins. So this is the only difference we have in this program here is that we declared some, some stuff, the version of the plugin, uh, its author, um, a short description, a name. It depends on the host how this information is used and also on the plugin standard how I could map it to some metadata in the in the plugin interface but it should work to some extent at least in the in the different hosts but i'm not going i don't know what i'm doing wrong <laughs> sorry about that again maybe it's because i'm running out of time and they want to remind me um, okay, the third example ha now has some more interesting stuff in it. I've added a few controls. You can also, in the materials that I included, if you go into, um, there's not only a makefile, there's also a readme in there which explains everything which I'm now just glossing over in, in a bit uh, more detail. But what we have, um, what we have here is uh, actually if I've added two parameters, gain and gate. That's also, I already have in mind of producing an instrument and we need that for the instrument later on too. And um, I've, to make the sound more interesting, I added some partials. Well, now there are three where there was only one. And um, this also um, shows how you can program with macros in, in Faust. Macro definitions look very much like ordinary function definitions, but they have patterns in them. And what happens here is whenever I need the value amp of one, it will take this definition, or for, the, um, for amp two, it will take this definition. So this sum will take the control variable that I want to use. With, with all the ranges and stuff, multiply it by the oscillator and the, the i value here is a running index, uh, which is defined down here. It will then run from zero to two and uh, because i comma three is written down here, it will run from zero to two. That's why I had to add one to the index here. But what this basically does, it's it defines partial E as a signal processor, which creates a sign. And uh, this, uh, this main function here, the process function, adds these three partials together. So I guess that should still be understandable as well. So we, where we had one control parameter, we now have uh, six in total, one for every uh, amplitude for, for every partial, and the other three which will then become the voice parameters of the, of the um, synthesizer which we're coming to in a few minutes. So let me briefly show you that. Using Q-Tractor again. Excuse me? Yes. Uh, Where? <laughs> here. Uh, uh, Sorry, Dav David, can I please have a glass of water? <laughs> that would be very nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, regarding the, the macro, is there any real difference? In, <coughs> because I was confused by the term. Uh, uh, when you compare it to some other function, or is it just regular pattern matching and the, <coughs> the expression uh, just define a function which is only defined on one, two, three, a partial function in a sense? No, or is actually it? it's a function which is evaluated as co at compile time and not when the, uh, not when the, it, Faust doesn't generate any code for the function itself, for the AMP uh, function, but it generates code for the, for the GUI elements as usual. But it's uh, it's missing it's from the compiled code. It's in kind of inlining, but it's it's really a, a, um, a, a macro language. Thank you very much, Heiko. But uh, I, I would theoretically have the possibility to uh, use pattern matching and make some I don't know complex whatever. <coughs> Yes, uh, we have some code like that. If you want to create complicated signal processors with repetitive pieces like meshes and so on, we regularly use that. 
But I can't, can't really explain it in a few words now, and I have no no examples to show right now. But it's used for much much more complex stuff as well. Um, okay, but but maybe I can ask that later when when I talk. Yes, about. I can then maybe look for some examples which you have. Thank you. Okay, let's try this new plugin. So create a new track. Which one was it? I forgot the number. Number three. Okay. First, need to turn it into MIDI track. And number three. There we are. Okay, it looks a bit funky. We will take care of that. Um, but you see there are the three sliders, and I have my frequency. I also have a new gain parameter, and I could, can push the gate button to play, and I can change the amplitudes. So it's beginning to look and sound like an instrument. And let's take that one step further. Next step. Um, okay, um, you probably, I, I forgot to mention this, but you probably heard that click, right? Um, that's because we have no envelope yet, of course. Uh, and if you just uh, start the sound with full amplitude, then it's going to click. You don't want to have that in instrument. That's why you add an amplitude envelope. And I did that in this version of the patch. Otherwise, it's still basically the same. But we have this part down here. <clears throat> if we take another look at the version of the source before that you see it just um, multiplies the, the the three oscillators with the gain and the gate but now instead of multiplying with the gate itself, it multiplies with some signal derived from the gate. And here you see how you can patch stuff together in Faust. We ha still have the same gate control signal, which will be one when the, when the note is played and uh, zero when it's off, and have this AD ADSR function, which turns this parameter uh, this control signal into a, a more complicated signal, namely into the envelope signal. That's a function which is available in music.lib as well. It's interesting to look at. It's a quite intricate implementation. I really like it. Uh, but fortunately, I didn't have to write it myself. Jan did that for me. And um, we just have to pass some parameters, and I've added these here. Attack, decay, sustain, release, just the classical stuff if you know about uh, sound synthesis uh, and the techniques which are being used there, then you know what I'm talking about now. So we need those four parameters to describe a curve which goes like that, or rather like this. Looks a bit like a church, so it has these, these, <coughs> these four periods. Attack, decay, sustain, release. And now instead, we just pipe this gate parameter into this ADSR function, which is a signal processor which takes this one parameter and then produces the envelope. And then we can multiply with this signal just as we multiplied with the control signal before. That's also one of the features of Faust is that all your operations operate on signals, not on single values. And you don't have to think about it even. So, and <clears throat> I also added master volume and, pan, and panning now, so that we have a stereo signal and uh, we can also control the volumes uh, separately for each voice later on. So I can briefly show that as well. Yeah, we still have time for that. I should really remember the keyboard shortcut. Can you change these? I want to have control T for that. <laughs> <clears throat> MIDI and so this was uh, four, right. So there we still there we have the attack decay sustain release parameters now. There's some some reason why they are not in alphabetic order, but that's all written in the README. I 
don't go into that now. And so we still have the gait and gain. But if you listen to the sound now, it should be with, uh, it should start without clicking. And I can control the left-right panning. It's also not as loud anymore. That's because of this parameter here. And we can, of course, change the amplitudes like we did before, but we can now also change the, the attack decay, sustain, release parameters and get different sounds, bold sounds and stuff like that. So now we almost have an instrument. That should be pretty clear. And we can go this one step further and this is now really easy because the rest is basically done by the architecture. Uh, you just have to tell um, the, the um, not even the Faust compiler but the architecture. The Faust compiler doesn't know or care about instruments. Uh, it doesn't know or care about MIDI. That's all in the architecture. And um, the architecture will pick up this extra metadata, the N voices. Uh, I introduced that into my architectures. I guess that we might make uh, some kind of uh, pseudo standard from that because I really want to have that information in the Faust program, at least in cases of architectures where it makes sense. So this tells uh, the, the architecture, I want 16 voices maximum. And I want this to be an instrument plugin. And this, the rest of the plugin is exactly the same. So we can give that a try now. Uh, no, I need to create a track. And I make it a MIDI track. And I add, I also changed the metadata. So it's actually now called synth instead of uh, sign, which I used before. That's just changing the metadata. Doesn't affect the functionality otherwise. So uh, as you can see, uh, well, one, op one thing that you will notice is that we have some new new controls down here, but the frequency gain gate parameters are gone. They are now automatically operated by the voice allocation algorithm, which is also included in the plugin architecture. So with just this simple step, just writing down declare and voices 16, uh, you now have an instrument. And the voice parameters, this frequency gain gate parameter, have become invisible. And the other parameters will be operated in lockstep for all the, for all the um, um, voices. So the, the um, architecture actually makes sure that there are enough instances of the, of the DSP available to play as many voices as you specified. And the actual number of voices uh, you can change with this polyphony parameter, which goes up to the n voices value. And yeah, that's about it. Let's play it a bit. And now comes the embarrassing part, because I'm not really not a piano piano player, uh, so I can't I can't really compete with winds, of course. And I still need to make a connection probably here, MIDI connection. So let's connect the, the, um, the keyboard to Q-Tractor and now I should hear sound. And now I can play this as an instrument. So of course I need to, probably need to change this to record. No, it wasn't even needed. So it's always monitoring, right? Okay, if it's connected. Great. So we now have an instrument, and there are some some more some more uh, details about this. I can only pick one or two now because I'm running out of time already. Um, but you can basically you can now go into to pick a MIDI file. Drag it in here. Why can't I drag it up uh, up here? Because I want actually I wanted it to have here, but it's not possible. Or is there a way to do that? Try clicking on the MIDI. Yes. If you want to hear from that, if you want to hear from that, 
you, you, can, you can drag that track, but not the, the, the whole file. The whole file will make the same Ah, uh, okay, I under, you yeah, now I got it. But, ah, there it is. Okay, then I can get rid of that one again. Thank you very much. You learn something new every day. So, same instrument again. Now, there's still some, some issues with that. You want to have a nicer GUI. I mean, it's not really formatted nicely. And uh, you... Uh, want to deal with zipper noise maybe and stuff. I've I've uh, um, I've taken care of that in the walkthrough too. But uh, maybe one thing that I want to still show you uh, in the in the end instrument. Yes, uh, the microphone. Where is it? Ah, there we there we go. Would you be able to automate the parameters we defined in the Faust code? Yes, they are all automatable, yes. automatically. So they so are all auto So Faust maps we, that to the to the They are all exposed in LV2. They are exposed as LV2 ports. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a MIDI input uh, mm -hmm. port where you can then uh, use the Faust assignments of MIDI controls, which is also mm -hmm. possible, or you do the MIDI control automation mm -hmm. in yes. the, on the door side. I wanted to go into all of this, but I'm running yes. out of time now, okay. so maybe we but can... But Faust abstracts this and, and translates it into the architecture which maps it to the ports? Or? Uh, basically, Faust has no business yeah. in that. Um, it's all done in the architecture. There's In the Faust program, there's certain metadata which the Faust compiler will just put into the output C++ program, which can then be used by the architecture, like the MIDI assignments and stuff. And all the, the connection to the, to the plugin API is done by the architecture. Faust knows nothing about VSD. It doesn't have to. I mean, the compiler... It's great. It's great. Right. So let me create another now with my new found knowledge. Let's have a quick look at this. So the end product product would then be something like this, which I even styled with the gray Faust style for Qt. Um, which looks pretty much like an, a standalone application which you get out of Faust when you use the Faust to uh, Jack QT script or something like that. Actually, it uses exactly the same code. It's just packaged a bit differently. And now you can play this as an instrument, but let me do this with MIDI. So again, I need the MIDI file. Inventio. So this is by Bach, and yeah, it works, actually. So let's look at the plugin again. And now you can just operate, if you've ever used Faust Live or generated a standalone plugin, you just operate it in exactly the same way. And, and okay, maybe sustain. So you see they're all working. They can also be automated and then operated by MIDI. Or you can operate directly by MIDI and it's multi-timbral actually. It keeps uh, track uh, of the separate MIDI channels. And in the end, um, what you can also do is well, uh, added functionality which you don't have in Faust Live yet. We want to merge all this code and then it will work uh, the same everywhere, but this is right now only in the LV2 and VST plugin architectures. Then you can also change the tuning on the fly. So basically, if I'm doing a question? There was a question, yes. Does this you probably uh, just just a second. You probably heard that this sounds uh, like a little bit out of tune now, which is because actually this is a uh, um, quarter mean tone, which sounds pretty bad in some, some uh, keys. And you can change this on the fly, or you can also send uh, MIDI tuning Sussex messages to the plugin. It will understand these as well if your DAW supports that. So this is also added functionality which you get for free.
Okay, now the question. And does this already already have dynamics? What do you mean by dynamics with different velocities? Uh, velocities, so, yes. Yes, sure. I mean, it's a complete meter synthesizer. The velocity gets mapped to the gain parameter. That's why I had two volume parameters. One was named gain, which is especially interpreted, uh, especially interpreted by the architecture as one of the voice parameters. So it's mapped automatically mapped from the velocity, and I've also put in the other volume parameter, which isn't interpreted by especially by the architecture, which can then be exposed in the GUI or in the generic GUI provided by your your DAW. So the architecture just maps the velocity to the, to the gain parameter? Yes. Okay. Thanks. And uh, the node beginning and end to the gate mm -hmm. parameter and the, the uh, node number uh, to the, the frequency. And the, this is where the tuning is used. And the tuning can also be different for every MIDI channel. So it's a fully multi-timbral instrument, which uh, we don't have in Faust Live yet, but once we merge the code will be there as well. Okay. Yes, then let me get back to my slides and finish off. Okay, I talked about this and the MIDI CC support. You can find it in the slides and in the in the README as well, where I explained the, the entire walkthrough, one thing which I didn't talk about yet, and I think I'm really, well, we started a bit late. Uh, where Where's the master of the ceremonies? Uh, can I, do you give me five more minutes? Okay, thank you. Then I can briefly show that uh, to finish off, but uh, so that I just finish off with the slides. Um, you have a very good opportunity to create your own plugins with either from existing Faust code or if you're a developer, we really try to lure you into Faust because it's just so much more convenient to write your stuff in Faust than in, uh, doing it in C, C++ or anything yourself. Um, the reason to also support VST with exactly the same functionality for me was that personally I also use other hosts. I couldn't show these now, but the stuff also works in Bitwig Studio and Traction and Ardo, of course. And so we have some nice hosts now which only support VST, Bitwig Studio and Traction. And so I wanted, because I'm using that also uh, in my courses at university, I wanted to have that work as well. Not because I'm really fond of the VST plugin architecture, but uh, I think it's important as a step. Uh, and uh, we can't, we just can't uh, close the eyes on the fact that VST is the cross-platform plugin architecture right now. I mean, LV2 pretty much, with very few exceptions, only works on Linux right now. And uh, now you can just take your Faust code and compile it to VST instead, and then you can run it on the Mac as the same plugin that you used on Linux. And the goal will is, of course, to have also the GUIs work, which doesn't work yet. There's some trouble with the LV2 stuff. It should work in principle. It even compiles on the Mac. But uh, the, the GUIs don't work in Ardo. I don't know why. They don't work in, Car uh, in Carla either. Probably some library incompatibility. I couldn't track that down yet. And in VST, there's, uh, if someone knows uh, Cocoa and knows how to embed a Qt window on the Mac in, in, a, in a native, native OS X window, then please get in touch with me. We still need to solve that. Other than that, uh, well, we probably will look into lighter toolkits as well. I mean, this, uh, this QT support was done by Roman Zwiedler, one of my students, and uh, it was a, a BEC project, so it had to be done in a certain time frame. And then it was very convenient to have all the ready-made code for, for QT in Faust itself. We, we used all of that, and it still works with faustvst.h header file unchanged. So uh, we just built on that. And um, 
but QT is not the optimal solution. Um, uh, I'm sure if Robin is still on the on ISC, he will agree with that. Uh, there should be other possibilities, but then we need to develop the code to to format the GUIs. Um, other interesting directions for for future work will, will be to port the architecture to uh, some other um, plugin uh, standards, <coughs> and also make it work directly in PD instead of the plugin that I will be showing now. And um, then something which I have uh, on my to do list, I just bought a mod. The new one, the mod duo, and uh, so we probably will add some some special uh, support for that in the LV2 architecture. And there's some other stuff, but uh, one thing which Wins uh, just brought up, which has been on my on my to do list for an eternity already, is MIDI output from the control variables. And uh, as he just convinced me, uh, this really needs to be available so that you can uh, have a feedback to your to your MIDI controllers. And so these are the things that I'm probably will work on as time permits. And as the last thing, before we can maybe have another q and I'm just going to show the same, the same uh, kinds of plugins that you've seen earlier in the one of the more elaborate examples. Um, I will show now in running in PD. So you can also find that in the GitHub repository. Um, <clears throat> there are two examples there, one more basic, and this one is a bit more like the, the stuff that I've shown in, in QTractor. So I'm running this in PDL2.org, but you, of course you can use vanilla PD or, or, um, or PD external instead. And as you can see, there's a, pl a special plugin here. Uh, you need more dependencies to get that to work because it's written in my own functional programming language, Pure. Um, but it's not too complicated to get it to work. You will find some notes in the readme files. And um, this can load any any kind of uh, LV2 plugin. It uses liplilvow, liplilv, uh, um, as... Uh, um, inside of it, and so it will load any plugin that that the library by um, the uh, Robiliard will load. And uh, there is no GUI, no QT GUI, even if you've compiled the plugin with GUI here in PD. But as you can see, there are some generated generic PD uh, GUIs. Actually, PD users will maybe even support that. But it would be nicer to have auto-generated formatted GUIs, which we already have code for that. Uh, so, I, But I first need to make this, this uh, LV2 VST architecture work in PD. We, the, the version we have now is still a bit more primitive. That's also on the to-do list. Just to convince you that this actually works, me, me run this from... MIDI player to pure data. So I have no sequence again, pure data. So I'm just taking a basic MIDI player application. And there we go. And we should also, same stuff, same plugins, exactly the same plugins now running here in, in PD. So that's the cliffhanger. Now I'm ready to take the Q&A, and thank you for listening. Uh, Albert, maybe two questions. The first one, you said that you do the automatic mapping of the uh, velocity to the gain. Right. If I don't like a linear ramp, how would I set my own exponential or logarithmic wave? Right. Right. <laughs> well, the, you get you get a linear parameter, but it's just mapped to the zero one range. 
you can then still en do anything in Faust that you like. So you can turn it into an exponential response or whatever you want. Second question. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, second one is, okay, so I've got you right. If the generated UIs don't really appeal to me and the ones with the mm. theme are somewhat nice but you really want something photorealistic, self-rendered, could you hook some self-made code with your own pix maps and rotational you knobs into it somewhere? just rip out the GUI code and put in your own. That's why I said it's, uh, it's so nice that you get C++ code. You can see that the GUI code actually... It's a part in the architecture which you can just throw out. And in the VST architecture, it's basically uh, that you can, that you can, uh, don't let me lie to you, but you should be able to just replace the editor callback. Uh, in the VST architecture and in the LV2 one, it's basically, well, there the link is a bit more intricate. But... Uh, so that's probably more work to integrate, to integrate your own GUI. Uh, but in principle, it's also, I mean, there's a queue widget which is created and uh, which gets then passed to, um, to the LV2 plugin host. And uh, if you rip out that code and uh, create another kind of widget instead, you, might, you sh uh, probably have to change the, the manifest which also says which kind of uh, widget it is. But we could maybe uh, make this easier by providing uh, some conditional compilation stuff which leaves out everything but, uh, but the call which you then have to implement uh, with your own GUI. So that, that's probably something we should still work on. It's certainly possible because you have the C++ output code, uh, but it's more work with LV2, I'd say, uh, right now, as with VST, where you can just take your own editor class and throw it in there and, and delete the traces of the old ones. Right. So, Albert, I might jump in there just as OpenAV, because I've actually done exactly right. this in two different ways. One, take the C++ code from right. Faust. I wrote an architecture backend for Faust, a really, really simple one, where you could pull your parameters and get float mm. pointers, and then you write your own C code or C++ code that actually pushes the values into the Faust DSP. So it's essentially take their magic and just bring it into really usable C code as a certain class. Right. And this was the way the first version of Sorcerer was actually built. Um, even though I never released architecture file because it was such a hack, but the code generated was that. And from the LV2 point of view, it's actually much simpler. You just add mm. another UI to the mm. plugin itself in the metadata, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be in the same bundle at all. Ah, okay. So yeah, you can you can specify a new bundle, and I think that's uh, the way the I, mod I guys are doing that right, too, right. which is a really beautiful solution. Right. Just that. Right. That's true. Um, because it's just also in the in the um, the um, LV2 architecture. I've shown that picture uh, which uh, um, displays how it's compiled. The, the um, GUI is really separate. It's a separate module. So you can just throw it away and put in your own GUI as a binary and, and just change the line with the, in, in the manifest which, which tells it where the plugin is. Or just build without GUI and add the stuff yourself. So that's really... that's. Uh, Harry is right. It's much easier than I imagined it to be. But if you want to have some, some template code, uh, um, how the integration could work, also with your own GUI, then you can maybe even use some of the code that we generate. OK, any more questions? Um, yeah, you here. In the middle. Ah, yep. okay. <laughs> um, you mentioned there were uh, you wanted to use other toolkits as well, some more lightweight. Should I? Are, are you thinking of like stuff like the the thing that Harry wrote and Robin? Yes, or that kind I'm of? thinking specifically about uh, his uh, toolkit. Cool. But there's other stuff. Uh, uh, we sh we should really team up to make that happen because Qt. It looks for me. It looks nice. Uh, I'm but I'm maybe not uh, the typical target audience, and uh, we should have alternatives there, but we need to make them happen. So I don't, I have no idea how to target his uh, GUI toolkit, and right now we don't have an architecture for that. We don't have faustqt.h for, for the OpenAV toolkit, and uh, 
So we still need to write that and uh, probably we need to team up with Harry. And there are other possibilities like OpenGL or something, uh, which uh, as soon as uh, Jan implements them, I will pick them up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then another question, uh, you yeah. mentioned uh, the number of voices, you wanted to make that a standardized param uh, parameter. Um, yes, it's all Should I be thinking about like, uh, uh, something where the different voices interact, where we have maybe you implement a bleed between them or something like that, or why would, why would you want to have that inside the Faust code as opposed to a, a compiled parameter or something like that? The number of voices? No. Yeah, you had the, the end voices parameter that you said to ah, 16. Okay, that's just metadata. It has nothing to do with the Faust program, basically. It gets picked up uh, by the architecture. and But there, right now, it's only supported by my own architectures, by the LV2 and the VST architecture. But it's conceivable to make that work with the other architectures as well, so that we have some kind of standard of specifying this Faust program should be an instrument by all architectures which support that kind of thing. So you, c you cannot make the different voices interact with each other inside the Faust code, like maybe. Yeah, that's the that's that's a disadvantage of this approach. If you want to do that, you basically you can't use that technique. Mm -hmm. Then you uh, build really a DSP, like usual, with all the voices in it as an ordinary effect, and then you have to do all the control yourself. Yeah. All right. All right. But that's probably a problem worth thinking about. So uh, it's, I mean, what basically what you probably want to do if you want to have interacting strings or stuff like that, then you want to pipe out some control information or even audio information and pipe it into the other, feed it back into the other, uh, other voices. So it's conceivable to also do it on the level of an, of an instrument plugin in this sense, uh, but it's not available yet. We we really have to develop some ideas for that. And yeah. And another thing, if we talk about voices, of course you want to have the, a completely dynamic voice allocation, but that's not so easy to do in a real-time context. So we're not doing that right now, but. Uh, Probably something for the to-do list as well. Okay, there so seems to be something from IRC. There is a question from IRC indeed. So Robin Gary has asked, does Faust slash LV2 cater for MIDI CC bindings? So is it possible to map CC to both parameters like ADSR and synth settings, synth settings like the sustain pedal? Uh, yes, uh, yes. I'd say yes. As uh, If I understood the question correctly, you're asking how to map uh, MIDI CCs directly onto the extra parameters in the instrument, right? That's, that's uh, possible. You just write some metadata, it's already implemented. Only the input side right now. Yes. Okay, thank you. I think we have to call it quits now because uh, everybody's waiting for the break and uh, I'm really thankful for being here because I'm not quite, uh, well, I'm actually the one to blame that you had to take on this task, David. So I want to say a special and personal thank you that we can be here at Berlin for this mini luck. Thank you very much. <laughs>